give it over to myself. My name is Joshua Kundia and I work for a company called Mybenier Systems and we are based in the USA but most of our uh, work, like most of our uh, engineers are based out of India. And uh, uh, Mybenier as a company, many of you may, may not have a hard up for Mybenier Systems but we basically have the complete stack for the service providers like starting from the radio to the packet core to the applications like the IMS applications and uh, and myself inside Pavilion I take care of the packet core and the 5G core I mean the 5G everybody is talking about the 5G and I handle the 5G core part of it so this is IoT solutions and the uh, edge computing you know falls under this say 5G core part so I am I'm familiar with the with the IoT part of it. Like Guru and the rest of the distinguished panel mentioned, IoT has got a tremendous potential. I think nobody is questioning whether it is going to happen or okay. It's a question of how fast it is going to happen and how the industry is going to cope with it. And in a few years, it will be a different world. I mean, there was a time when, you know, the browser was not available. But now, I mean, that time people were only thinking what the browser can do to the society. And now we all know how the society has changed with respect to the availability of the browser. And the same thing is going to happen with respect to the, uh, the IoT as an industry. Now, with the, in respect to the IoT ecosystem, in my mind there are the three parts. One of them is the IoT devices. The second part is the connectivity as in you build a network for the IoT devices. And the th third part is the application. I mean, okay, there are got to be some applications which is going to manage these devices. There are the three parts. Now, uh, okay, so I will touch upon another subject with respect to the, the protocol because some of my colleagues also mentioned about the protocol. See, the, the way I look at it, the IoT is going to be so huge there is actually no need for having one protocol. There are several protocols that can coexist without any problem. Right? And it is perfectly okay to have a fragmented thing. For example, I mean if the if the use case is to kind of manage the smart meters, you know the, the you know you have got the parking lot and you have got the meters and you have to make the smart meters out of those meters. There is no reason to have the same technology for the smart meters throughout the world because it's very much a localized problem. Okay? And but but when you talk about the you know some other things, that may not be the case. Now with respect to the connectivity, there are already different protocols uh, available in the market, uh, like the Sigfox, the JB. But the one which is more important and where I am going to talk more about it is the is the cellular IoT. Because the service providers, as we know, they provide the cellular, they have got the cellular network and the IoT devices, if they are going to use the cellular IoT, then, uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 in my mind, I mean, the cellular IoT is very well suited for these IoT devices and also it has got almost universal coverage. It's, it's there everywhere. You just have to use that network to kind of handle the IoT devices. Now, okay. Now, how do you kind of, uh, you know, everybody is talking about, you know, potentially there will be trillions of devices and the, put, and the operators need to manage it in a cost-effective way. Because we are not going to get, you know, like a, like a 50 box RPU like you get in the voice, in the voice wrapping. I mean, the, the, the cost or the price associated with these things will be very small. So then the question becomes, how do the service, service operators manage this thing in a cost-effective manner? So one part is the price of the device, and here again, the, the prices are going to be very different for the use case. For example, the price of an IoT device in a smart meter is going to be very different than the price that goes in a connect in a car. Okay? So, but, but then when it comes to the network part of it, the service provider must have a network where it can handle these IoT devices very efficiently and cost effectively. And the deployment part of the IoT devices, it got to be very simple. You just connect the IoT device to something and it just gets, it gets connected, provisioned and everything got to be automated. So, uh, so now to manage it in a very cost effective manner, that's why the platform comes into picture. 
the service providers today, the telecom operators, what I call them, they have got a platform which is a telecom platform. So the first thing is the service providers need to move from a telecom platform to an IT platform. And as many of you know, the IT platform, I mean the Googles of the world, the Facebooks, the, the Apple, the Netflix, I mean these companies use the IT platform, they, these companies use a platform where they handle a lot more traffic, a lot more users than the typical service providers. So the first thing the service providers need to do is kind of a go and they adapt a IT platform and that's where the 5G core, even the 3GPP standards are defining standards in a way it encourages them to go to the go to this IT platform. So with this platform, uh, another thing what happens, I think some of my colleagues mentioned about the scalability part of it. I mean, how do you have the capacity? I mean, today you may be handling 100 million IoT devices and tomorrow you may be need to handle like a 200 million IoT devices. So you need to have the infrastructure so that you are not taking another six months to kind of, uh, you know, do your uh, capacity increase like the typical service providers do, do today. I mean, you just, you just add the compute and everything else kind of falls into place. So that, uh, you know, the, the platform itself enables you to, to kind of increase the capacity, you know, have the scalability that you need and it happens in a very cost effective manner. So, uh, so that's, that's basically what Apuru was mentioning about the challenges the service providers uh, will face, the potentially will face. So with the adoption of this new IT platform, I mean they can stay ahead of this call. Okay? And then the, then the other part is the application part that I, that I mentioned. See the application is going to be different for the different type of IoT devices. For example, you need one application to manage your smart meters but you will need a different kind of application to manage the connected cars. So even these applications need to be onboarded to the platform, you know, in a very efficient manner. So that's where again this IT platform comes into picture, right? And then, then with respect to the with respect to the applications, another big and important part is the analytics part. So again, some of my colleagues kind of alluded to that, but these IoT devices are going to generate a massive amount of a data. What do you do with this data? Data is meaningless unless you can get some uh, information out of it, unless you can get some meaning out of it. So what these operators need to do? Basically have a system, you know, I mean if the people talk about the big data, I don't know whether even big data is going to be good enough to handle this massive amount of a data. But the industry needs to evolve so that you have a database system where you can absorb massive amount of data generated from these IoT devices. And once you have this massive amount of data, then you need some application, you need some logic to kind of mine the data and make some meaning out of it. So the 3GPP has a defined, a, a defined a function, they call it the NWDAX, basically Network Data Analytics Function. So this, this function, you know, there will be a lot of innovation in this area. So that okay, the, the, the different applications will mine the data to make some meaning and that is where the machine learning comes into picture, artificial intelligence comes into picture and it's going to be a really, really very interesting field and a lot of innovation is going to happen and the society is going to benefit a lot from all this innovation. So that's all good.